What's going on guys, it's your boy Big Hero Chris back at you with another one. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell. Hit me up on Twitter, TikTok, community post, social media, MySpace. Um, leave a message in a bottle for me, uh, smoke signals, however you want to get in contact with me, you already know the vibes. And alert the city boys, let them know we back up, man, we back up. AEW Dynamite, man, Tony Khan. Tony Khan was in the kitchen cooking this week, man. So, uh, of course, this past week's episode of Monday Night Raw was absolute trash. Um, Vince McMahon's apparently back in creative, so a lot of wrestling fans were feeling feeling pretty defeated, man. Pretty, pretty, feeling pretty down. But NXT was good, and then you had this week's episode of AEW Dynamite, which, which was really good, man. I was kind of down on last week's episode of Dynamite, but this week's episode, this week way better off rip way better just by the way the show started so it kicked off with, with um what was supposed to be a match between ricky starks and juice robinson right so ricky starks makes his entrance and then juice robinson's music hits but it's not juice robinson's music it's actually jay white's music and at first i thought that they were trolling because you know the rumors on the internet were saying that jay white didn't know if he was going to wwe or aw but then rumors also came out that he's not going to wwe so i i thought it was just aw trolling us at first i thought it was use robinson trolling at first but this man jay white actually pulled up he actually pulled up on um, ricky starks the match didn't even take place ricky um juice robinson and jay white ended up putting the beat down on um, ricky starks and then immediately after this happened, Tony Khan announced on Twitter that Jay White is officially all elite. This man is officially signed. I'm, I'm just happy to see Jay White on TV. Like, uh, prior to um, AEW and the Forbidden Door and everything, I wasn't all too familiar with Jay White, but from what I saw, I always I, I, I like Jay White. And I always felt like he should be on somebody's television, whether it's with AEW or WWE. Like the dudes, to me, he's really charismatic, good wrestler, and I feel like he's like a really good heel. I also have to send congratulations to FTR. They managed to beat the ass boys, keep their jobs, and become the new AEW Tag Team Champions. Um, in, in the main event, FTR came out first, had a pretty cool entrance, but their entrance was trumped by the ass boys and I said I wasn't gonna call these dudes the ass boys anymore unless they lost and they lost so they're still the ass boys but I do have to give these dudes their props because the entrance was pretty awesome somehow some way they finessed Tony Khan into letting these letting them come out to many men by 50 cent <laughs> I'm like yo these dudes gotta win at this point like there's no way you come out to a 50 cent song in a wrestling match and lose and somehow the ass boys did it but it was an entertaining match. Um, the Gun Club were trying to get intentionally disqualified because FTR was just beating these boys. So they were trying to do everything they could to get disqualified on purpose by pulling the referee out of the ring, hitting a low blow in front of the referee, trying to hit um, one of the FTR bald with the title in front of the referee, trying to get intentionally disqualified so they can hold on to their titles and be rid of FTR. But no matter what they did, no matter what they tried, FTR pulled it out. And won, and they're now your two-time AEW Tag Team Champion. So you know what, man? I ain't even mad at it. Good for them. Good for FTR. Happy for them. Happy that they're staying around in WWE. I mean, not ooh, definitely not WWE, but um, staying around in AEW. Yeah, good for FTR. The rest of Dynamite was a really good show. Um, you had Best Friends taking on the House of Black for the uh, Trios Tag Team Championships. House of Black came out first. And then you had the um, best friends with Sue. The van is back. Sue is back. The real is back. Sue is in the building. Company um, seeing her boys off for their trios tag team match. Now, of course, the um, best friends didn't win. But some people say the, the, the real trios titles are the best friends you make on all the way. 
that's cap. The, the real trio titles or the actual trio championships that the House of Black still have. Um, Buddy, Mur um, Buddy Matthews had, um, I can't remember who it was, but he had the curb stomp on somebody and giving them um, wins to the House of Black. And as this match is taking place, you have um, LFI looking on. So maybe setting up a trios match between LFI and possibly House of Black. So, you know, I ain't mad at that. Something pretty cool to see. Something that's um, kind of intriguing to see, though, is um, we saw Chris Jericho backstage talking. And he was talking about um, why he came down last week at the end of the um, Daniel Garcia-Adam Cole match. And pretty much what Chris Jericho was saying was it kind of felt like he was kind of jealous of Adam Cole and Britt Baker for getting the shine, taking the shine. He said it was taking the shine away from Daniel Garcia, but I feel like Chris Jericho was low-key jealous of Adam Cole. And if that's the story they're going with, uh, whatever. Because on the flip side of this, you already have 2.0 and 2.0 trying to get um, the acclaim to join up with them and the inner circle. Um, we saw the um, 2.0 trying to, you know, lure the the, um, the claim into the inner not damn did i say the inner circle i'm in the jericho appreciation society it's pretty much the same group which is a different name but they're trying to get them to join the jericho appreciation society mass caster freestyled and pretty much told these dudes no but 2.0 was like nah 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 see what's gonna happen is we're gonna team up and it's gonna be eight man tag match on rampage and it's gonna be awesome and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um so yeah so i don't think we're gonna i, I don't know i'm uh, I'm trying to be patient with this whole Chris Jericho, Adam Cole thing. In the meantime, between time, next week we're going to have Chris Jericho wrestle Keith Lee. Why? I don't know. Keith Lee just popped up out of nowhere and said he felt disrespected by Chris Jericho. I wasn't really paying attention. But um, next week is going to be Keith Lee versus Chris Jericho. Well, I mean, that should be a pretty cool match. So the next match we had was for the AEW Women's Championship. You had Rio taking on Jamie Hayter. This was a pretty fun match. You saw um, Rio hitting a, a 619 on Jamie Hayter. Uh, Jamie Hayter pretty much knocked the Sonic rings out of Rio twice, hitting her with her two Hayter Raid clotheslines. Um, Jamie Hayter wins, retains her title. You know, pretty solid match. Pretty solid match. Um, after the match, you cut to the Outcast in the back. And they're pretty much saying that um, at least one of these, these women are going to be the AEW Women's Champion. So yeah, yeah, pretty much making it known that you know they want some championship gold. Good for them. I mean, hey, it is what it is. It, it, at least we didn't get a um the typical outcast segment. So it is what it is. I ain't too mad at it. Also, I apologize for being so rude. I forgot to wish you guys a happy MJF day. Um, AEW Dynamite took place in um Long Island, New, um, New York this week. Um, they showed a video package of um, MJF getting the key to the city. MJF came out, you know, played it up to the crowd. And Long Island is kind of like what WWE, what Canada is for WWE. Like whenever MJF goes to um, Long Island, he's like the big hero. You think he's like the biggest baby face on the history, on, on the face of the earth. You know what I'm saying? But it's Long Island, so nobody really cares about them anyway because they're it's Long Island. You know what I'm saying? But MJF comes out. He sings his way to the ring. He 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 sung. What was the name of the song? Like um, Penny for your thoughts or whatever it was called. Uh, Umbrella full of nickels or what? I don't know what it was called. But MJF actually has a really good singing voice. I forget this from time to time. Um, he got a bigger key to the city from the mayor of Long Island, I think. Um, told this story. Told another one, another one of his own backstories about. How his um, teacher from, I believe, eighth grade always gave him crap for, you know, having ADD and not being able to, able to focus and getting his questions wrong or blah, blah, blah. You already know how this goes. And MJF said the only thing that helped him focus was professional wrestling. So he gave this quote unquote motivational speech to um, the kids of Long Island saying that you can be whatever you want to be except for better than MJF because nobody will be MJF because he is better than you and you know it. So as um, MJF is making his way back up to the ramp, he wants to, to sing another song and he gets attacked by Jungle Boy. And because it is Long Island, Jungle Boy gets booed because he's putting hands on MJF. And as these two are fighting, Sammy Guevara comes out and he holds up the um, AEW championship teasing both MJF and Jungle Boy. And then Sammy Guevara had a, a match against Commander. 
and it was and for what it was it was a pretty good match you know commander got his stuff off he was doing flips and dives and walking the rope and you know doing all sorts of cool stuff it uh, ended with a, a super cutter from sammy Guevara, the, um commander off the top rope sammy Guevara wins after the match he cut a promo on mjf pretty much saying that um mjf used people to get to where he is whereas sammy Guevara made it kind of sort of on his own even though he was part of the part of the inner circle part of the jericho appreciation society he never like used people he he does for the most part he did it on his own like mjf cody got name drop also there was a person in the sign no per person in the crowd holding up a lol cody sign <laughs> making fun of the fact that cody didn't win the wwe universal championship it is what it is but yeah man sammy Guevara cut his promo on mjf and um also while this was happening um darby allen was in the rafters like sting like his father's sting so um, what i'm assuming is going to happen next week is darby allen is going to have his match and then he's going to talk trash about mjf or he's going to have some type of inter interaction with mjf and you know this is just building up to um the inevitable fatal four-way match between all four all the four pillars of AEW for the um AEW championship so you know that should be a pretty cool time pretty cool thing to have happen Speaking of cool, you have Hook. We sent for Hook. Hook had a uh, match against Ethan Page for the FTW Championship. And for what it was, it was, it was a short match. Um, Hook, Ethan Page was out there with Matt Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy. And the match was going fine. Um, <laughs> until that dastardly Matt Hardy cost Ethan Page the FTW Championship. Matt Hardy hit um, Ethan Page with the FT FTW title. And Hook locked in the red room and made this man tap out. So Hook is still the um, FTW champion. I'm pretty sure that somehow, some way, Matt Hardy finesses his way out of his contract with um, Ethan Page. Finesse his way, um, his way and private, par pri private party's way out of the contract with um, Ethan Page and the firm. And it kind of sucks because you kind of see Ethan Page kind of becoming friends with Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy just, you know snaking his way out of this contract he was just using ethan page just to get out of this um 360 deal <laughs> he had with ethan page so you know i'm guessing that eventually that ethan page and matt hardy are going to have a match some way down the line i mean pretty fun segment for what it was worth you know nothing really too much to write home about it is what it is but something that is a pretty cool thing to have happen is a special announcement another one of these tony khan major announcements except this time actually it was a major announcement so you have tony khan come out oh wait he's in the backstage um area and he has nigel mcginnis nigel mcginnis who is also a all elite now he's officially signed with AEW. i feel i um think he's he was announced as a uh, backstage correspondent so i guess he's gonna be do, doing commentary and interviews and maybe doing commentary on ring of honor so it's pretty cool to see nigel mcginnis back in the world of wrestling and what happened was they announced that this august i believe all out or no 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 not all out all in will be making his pay-per-view return and they will be doing this in london england from the wembley stadium so how cool is that all in is back and it's going to be in london england that crowd is going to be crazy that show is going to be crazy so that is a pretty cool announcement can't even lie i don't really know why i needed to take up tv time but you know hey man you get it how you live you know you hype it up however you want to hype it up pretty cool thing another pretty cool thing that have happened was the blackpool combat club beating up some some jabronis I, they didn't even get um announced you don't even know what these dudes names are at this point does even even matter blackpool combat club clapped all three of their cheeks <laughs> one and then you had brian danderson um pretty much lay out the mission statement for the the new iteration of the blackpool combat club pretty much saying that the blackpool combat club are the only professionals in AEW and everyone else is amateurs he kept saying amateurs it kind of reminded me of um the planet champions brian danielson one of them he kept saying fickle except this time instead of you saying fickle he's saying amateurs pretty much saying that the um that the, the jobbers at the bcc beat up would look like somebody that the evps would hire throwing shots at the elite um calling them amateurs and then hangman adam page came out all by himself no young bucks no kenny omega no dark order this man came out by himself and daniel brian Daniels was like yo who, who's gonna come help you nobody loves you you're an amateur too and then they just beat his ass too 
And the crazy part about this, about this whole segment was Brian Danielson had a screwdriver and we're made to believe that Brian Danielson took the screwdriver and dug it in the eye of Hangman Adam Page. So now we have another Rey Mysterio situation. Maybe we'll have an eye for an eye match. We don't know. We don't want to see this. We don't want to see nobody's eye taken out. But yeah, man, the Blackpool Combat Club is more dangerous now than ever. Brian Danielson is back. Blackpool Combat Club is dangerous. And a lot of people were thinking that this is going to lead to either anarchy in the arena or maybe blood and guts between the Blackpool Combat Club and the elite. Um, real quick, I, I think that um somehow Takeshi gets involved. But instead of joining up with the elite, because Don Callis has been courting this dude for a hot minute. But I feel like he's going to join up with um, the BCC. And then you maybe have Kota Ibushi join up with the elite. So then that's how you get the five on five match between the elite and the bcc so if it happens cool if it doesn't you know it's no skin off my nose but this week's episode of dynamite man tony khan you chefed up a good one you earned this honorary w man that being said what did you guys think of this week's episode of dynamite let me know in the comment section below of course as always like comment and subscribe you guys take care of bees i'm out peace